All right, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, call Halal Yahweh by Shimei Abishai by Shimei Kadash. That will honor our apostles and elders of Great Middle Son, who well to the Spirit. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. All right, preaching and living the word of sincerity and truth scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. All right, also Shalom to the um, the one third, the peace of multitude, which are the women, men, women, and children um, that are going to believe on that word as well. All right, peace and blessings. It's Brother Yara from GMS Dallas uh, coming back with a quick lesson through the Spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimei Abishai. And, um, just concerning the topic I'm going to go into is concerning how the Lord is going to come back, okay? How the Most High, who the world ignorantly calls God, how he's going to send back his only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, okay? So we're just going to go into, um, you know, his his characteristics and, how, and what's going to happen when he comes back, man, because you have these um, Christian churches, uh, according to their doctrine of Christianity, uh, they're not teaching the correct doctrine concerning the Lord, man. Okay, they're not teaching his characteristics. They're not teaching what's what is what he's gonna do when he comes back. And so there's no real fear in those churches, man, to to have those members in line according with the Spirit, man, and get in order. Okay, they they have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. So they don't know the characteristics of the Lord because the Most High is not dealing with those churches. Those are harlot houses. Okay, why are they harlot houses? Because there's actual Adultery being going on, and our uh, women there are allowed to be act, acting like whores, deal with multiple men, get divorced, marry another man. Uh, the young women are just whores in there, you know. Some of the worst women you could deal with is a woman in that church, man. A uh, men's amount of pride and also adult, spiritual adultery concerning the doctrine. And this is talking about our people, okay? The, the true Israelites, according to the Bible. You so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. You're the true Israelites, man. And those harlot houses have you committed spiritual adultery against your power, man. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? It doesn't teach you that you're Israelites. It doesn't teach you why you came over here in America to serve slavery. It doesn't teach you not to eat the dot, the dot, how, to, how to follow the dietary laws. Okay? All that is is, is a, a, a idol worship, man. At the end of the day, and that and that spiritual adultery, because the Most High is is our husband, and Israel is likened unto a woman. Uh, real quick, let me just prove that. Jeremiah six and two: I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So uh, we're we're the Most High's woman at the end of the day, okay? So we're we're the woman. So Isaiah fifty four and five: For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh of hosts, is his name. <coughs> Ooh, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, Brock yeah. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the power of the whole earth, shall he be called. So the Most High is our husband, man. Okay? So we're in those churches. And we were once in those churches. We came up in Christianity, so we know how it works. <coughs> Ooh, fuck you. You know? So we know. So the Most High is our husband. And right now, those churches have our people committing spiritual adultery. Okay? And so, like I said, one of the things is teaching, man. It's not teaching what the Lord is going to do. Jake talk about how they, they can't wait for the Lord to come back, but their actions speak otherwise, man. Okay? Your actions speak completely otherwise versus what you're saying. You know? You're giving, our people give a whole lot of lip service, but they're not doing what the Lord is telling us, telling them to do. So, you, they're going to be, they're going to be uh, that, that, that server that say, yeah, depart from me. I never knew you. You work of iniquity. A lot of people, those, those people in churches, man, if you don't get out of them churches and repent, and come back to your your actual true nationality, okay, and your power, man. Okay, you're gonna be sadly disappointed in the day of judgment and in the day of the Lord, man. Because the day of the Lord, as the scriptures say, is darkness and not light. So when the Most High sends his son back, man, okay, he's not coming back to give daps and hugs and all that, man. He's coming back for utter judgment, man. Now he's gonna give a reward to his servants of prophets, okay, for standing so stiff for the name. But for the majority of the people, man, it's gonna be bad out here. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna render a reward for for judgment and destruction and death, man. Okay, they try to paint the Lord as some some soft pansy. Now he came humble the first time in the Roman captivity. Okay, he came as a lamb, but then but now he's gonna come back as a lion, man. Okay, so let's get a Second Corinthians five first, and then we'll go to the prophecy of Zechariah. All right, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, okay, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. So everyone's going to receive a reward, man, and the Lord's going to come back and issue out that reward, man, in, with judgment, okay? 
And for the majority of the people, two thirds of our people, man, you, you again, you Negroes, you Latinos, you Native Americans, you West Indians, Haitians, Puerto Ricans, all the twelve tribes of Israel, man, two thirds of you are going to be destroyed, man. Okay, you're gonna be you're gonna be judged according to your works. Now, work. Now we know that even elect, the works are not going to save us, but we show our faith by our works. Okay, and that's another thing they teach you. You don't have to follow the the law, statutes, commandments in the church. Okay. They just tell you it's all about faith. No, man. You do what you can. You rehearse the righteous acts. And that's how you show your faith because you know the law is going to save you. We have to be covered, man. Okay, but having faith in Yahweh Shah and his sacrifice, having faith in that, that's what's going to save us. But you also have to work, man. You also have to do certain things. You have to preach. You have to go out the highways and byways, whether the people hear or forbear. You have to tell the truth, man. You have to eat the whole roll, which those churches don't do. They don't eat the whole roll. They don't go into the New Testament. I mean, the Old Testament. And if you don't have understanding of the Old Testament with the history of Israel, you're not going to understand the New Testament, which is the new covenant. OK. But this is how the Lord came the first time. man. He came lowly and humble uh, as his job to lay down his life for, for the elect of the nation of Israel. But then ultimately the whole nation. But on this side, for the deliverance, the elect is going to be delivered. OK. Under the blood of Yahweh Shai. Zechariah 9 and 9. Rejoice. And now I don't have anything pretty much written down, just kind of going in the spirit. So, Lord willing, this is edifying for Akio. Uh, Zechariah 9 and 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. And who is that king? It's talking about Yahweh Shah. Okay, when they crucified him, they had it in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, the king of the Jews. Okay? He is our king. And uh, he is just in having salvation, lowly, and in riding upon an ass, and upon a coat, the foal of an ass. And he fulfilled that prophecy in the Gospels, okay? And he came down and laid, laid down his life, man. Because he, he's, he's a lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Uh, let's get that. Revelation 13, 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of the life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. And that's talking about Yahweh shot, man. Okay. It was written before the foundation of the earth. Okay. That, that it was prophesied that he was going to have to die for the nation, man. It was already written in the spirit, man. You know, everything, everything is just playing out now. Okay. The prophecies and in, in, in how the most I had it all set up is, uh, is setting, is, is, is playing out now. Because he told us these things. According to Isaiah, what's that, Isaiah 42? Let's see, uh, let's lock here. Yeah, Isaiah 42 and 8. I am Yahweh, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. And that's, that's the thing, man. You churches try to give glory to other things, man. Another, another name, man. You're teaching another salvation. You uh, follow after idol worship. So why Galatians says in first chapter talks about to speaking about another Jesus or another salvation or savior. And, and that's what you churches teach, man. You know, you're not teaching Yahweh Shai. Okay? You're teaching a doctrine that was given to us by our slave masters, okay, which is a so called white man who are the Edomites according to the Bible. You're teaching according to that doctrine. You have you're teaching a Western mindset, okay? A, a Western viewpoint to the scriptures, man, and it's completely off, man, and it's got our it's gotten our people in the worst state that has ever been, man. You know, that Christianity and that religion is worse than crack, man. It's got our people bugged the hell out, man. Pop locking for the Lord, just steady yelling, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. You know, people bugged out, man. Take twerking for for the Lord. You know, twerking on Sundays, man, shaking your ass, man. You know. Just a few, a couple of examples, but but hey, we know there's multiple examples of how the Christian church is just through, you know. Uh, and uh, my glory will not, I will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. So the Most High revealed these things unto His men, and in the Scriptures before they played out, man. You know it, that's why Yahweh shines a lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Let's see, these things were told unto us, you know. There's multiple prophecies of the Lord before he came. And he fulfilled that. Now, because now chief, now right now we're speaking of Zechariah 9 and 9. He fulfilled that in the gospels, man. He came lowly and he and he and he, he was he was he was a lamb slain. Now lamb lamb and sheep, what do they do? They just lay down their life, man. 
You know, they don't fight. They don't fuss. They just lay down life and give it up. And that's what Yahweh did, man, for the nation, which was prophesied, man. Okay? But he, he fulfilled those prophecies. And now the rest of the prophecies is he's going to come back in all full power, man, in glorification. Because he was, because he sacrificed himself, he came and did the will of the Heavenly Father perfectly, might I add. Okay? He kept the laws and statutes and commandments perfectly. And they gave up his life to where he was that perfect sacrificial lamb, man. And then what? He was able to, he was given the glory of sitting on, sitting back on the right hand of the Heavenly Father, man. And, and the elect men are going to be joint heirs. That's the reward that's coming on the right hand side. On the left hand side, it's going to be utter death and destruction and, and, and harsh judgment, man. You know? And he, and he, and he's, and now he's glorified, man. He's, he's given, he's, um, he's been given that, uh, to, to the Heavenly Father, man. That's why I said, sit down on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. You know? Alright, so this is Psalms 2. And, uh, We'll just start at two. I right, start, start at verse one. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine the vain thing? And that's these heathens, man. These other nations think they're they're jock, jockeying for a position, thinking they're gonna be the next rulers, man. Now knowing that they're, they're all gonna be subdued and destroyed in the third world's war, man. Okay, the kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and and against His anointed, saying, "Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us." And that's and that's these other nations, man. They have their different councils. You know, they have the UN. You know, Israel doesn't have a say in that. The true Israelites, you know, they're taking counsel together against the Heavenly Father and His anointed, man. And they're trying to keep the name of us. We can read about that in Psalms, the 83rd chapter. He that sitteth in heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. The Most High is laughing because he's in control, man. The scriptures say he ruled in the kingdom of men. Okay? So he's laughing right now. The angels are laughing. He's like, man, the Most High has all this set up. Everyone's playing a role out, man. And, he's, and, he, and he has them in derision, you know? Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. And that's and that's what he's doing, man. Okay, that's how he's gonna speak to them in wrath, man, in judgment. You know, that's why they're all being gathered together in the valley of Jehoshaphat, man, which is Yahweh that Jehoshaphat in Hebrew means Yahweh Shapat, the most high of the Lord's judgment. And that's going on in the Middle East right now, man. That's why all those skirmishes are going on. That's why these all little proxy wars and different wars and trade wars are going on, man. It's going to culminate and come to a head in the Middle East with, with the World War III. The world, the world, the world to end all wars, man. Okay? It's going to be done with fuel and flame and fire, man. Nuclear, it's going to be a nuclear war. Okay? And in time while they're fighting, your house is going to come back, man, in his chariots. And he's going to issue our judgment that way, man. Yet have I set my king upon my holy mount, hill of Zion, which means monument, and the king is Yahweh. I will declare the decree Yahweh hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Talking about Yahweh, man. He's the only begotten son. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Okay? Everything has been given to Yahweh, man. Okay? He's the Alpha and Omega. He, he's been he's the only begotten son, the only one to be created by the Heavenly Father. And everything was given to him, and he was given a blueprint to create everything using the angels, the rest of the powers, which are the first fruits, which are the elect coming back teaching, man. Okay. And he's gone back and he's gonna rule, rule everything, man. Thou shalt break them with their rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a violent pencil. So the, the, the Lord's coming back to uh, put issue out slavery, man, to the rest of the heathen, man. But you churches are talking about what? Anyone can be saved, man. Okay, when you read the scriptures, the Lord only came for Israel, man. He said that out of his own mouth. And then, then, then his men and apostles and the disciples um, expounded upon that, man. You just don't understand it in those churches. But he's coming back to, to issue out slavery and subdue the rest of the heathen, man. And that's something that you churches are not teaching because that's not a, 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 that's not a um, comely doctrine. Okay, that's not fuzzy and lovey, man. That means that someone's gonna have to be died. That's going to, someone has to be destroyed. People are gonna be put to death. People are gonna be enslaved. Okay, the Lord's coming back to to um to avenge His people, man. But you Jays don't want to be avenged. You just want to. You just so docile. You just want to go along, get along, man. You you you're you're home born slaves right now, man. You know. You don't even question why we wouldn't slurry. Jake don't even care, man. That's in the scriptures. Okay, that's that's in the curses. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Man, that's not a nice thing, man. 
Okay, the Lord wasn't all about just be fuzzy feelings, man. He was uh, the most austere man. That means morally strict. Okay, they didn't want to kill him for nothing, man. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. And, and our people are judges of the earth. And those are judges in those um in those churches, man. They're reprobates, man. And that means void of righteous judgment. Okay, they're teaching a reprobate doctrine. They're following a reprobate mindset. And there is no judgment there. That's why they say you can't judge, man. But you're supposed to judge everything, man. The Lord said judge righteous judgment. You know? You can judge, man. You just have to be, you just hypocrite about it. You know? They like to quote Matthew 7, but they don't read down on that, you know? So, like I say, he said he's, he's going to break them as a rod of iron, man. So, the Lord's come back to issue out judgment and issue out slavery, man. You know? This is Luke 19 and 27. But let's go to Revelation. So like I said, man, they, that that doctor, the Lord's been X'd out in those in those churches, man. This is Revelation eleven and eight, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And America, aka Babylon the Great, the the, the mother of all harlots, okay, mystery Babylon. That's the great city, man, and it's spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Why? Because there there's sodomy going on here. Homosexuals have all the rights here, man. And it's Egypt because why? We serve slavery here. That means that there is double straits. Okay, Montezaria. Okay, and when you read Exodus, it's, it refers Egypt to what? The house of bondage, man. Okay, so this is where we serve slavery and captivity. And here, homosexual, homosexuals can get married in all 50 states. You can't say anything about it where it's a hate crime. Okay, these transgenders are, are, are walking around stripping in front of kids, showing off their, their genitals under their dresses. Okay. They're teaching homosexual um, curriculum in schools, not to elementary kids, man. You know, homosexual tolerance, transgender tolerance. All this wickedness is going on, man. This is spiritually Sodom and Egypt, man, and where our Lord was crucified. And what does that mean, man? His true essence is being killed here. What the Lord looked like, they set him up as a so-called white man they had, with leprosy. Okay. What he taught. All those different things are being cut out here in in, in, in America, man, in, in those Christian churches, man. So you people have no idea what the Lord is all about. You know, who he came to save, they say he loves everyone. Well, that's not true. You know, if he, came to save, if he came to save everyone, you know, why did he say this? Luke 19 and 27. Or if he loved everyone, but those my enemies, which were not that I should reign over them, Bring hither and slay them before me. So if, if he's all about love, why would he make this statement, man? If you have a red letter Bible, this is the Lord talking right here, man. I mean, put them to death, man. If they don't want to get in line, put them to death. Why don't you churches teach that, man? You're not teaching the fear of the Lord, man. You're you're the fear of the Lord is being taught by the precept of men in those churches, which that means that the precept means a commandment, man. Okay? By the commandments of men, not of, of the Heavenly Father, because the Most High is not dealing with those churches, man. You know? If the Lord came to save everyone, why did he speak to them in parables? Matthew 13, uh, he stays speaking in parables and talking over people's heads. Man, if, every, if salvation was opened up to everyone, why would he just not make everything plain for everyone? You have to ask yourself that question, man, and be honest, man. You don't have to feel guilty because the white man didn't include it, man. The hell with the white man. He says the hell with you. The hell with Esau, man. You just need to wake up. Or not, you know. Matthew 13 and 9, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto, unto them in parables? He answered, and, all right, because he, because the Lord had just finished the parable of the sower. Okay? And the disciples was like, why, why are you talking to him like that? They're they not going to get it, man. You know? Because let's look at what's a parable, man. So he's, he, and he, and the Lord spoke in many parables. To the scribes and the Pharisees and to a lot of people that followed him, man. You know? Uh, that's, that's in the Greek. Uh, G, Strong's G3849. Parabole. A placing of one thing by the side of another. Juxtaposition as of ships in battle. Okay, so that, that kind of goes into what? Parallel, you know? If something's running parallel, they're running alongside, running, running, um, alongside each other, okay? 
um, metaphor and comparing comparison of one thing with another likeness or similar to. So he 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 likens a kingdom of heaven to a lot of things, you know, to a parable. So it runs parallel to what he's actually saying. The verse is something uh, as a metaphor, but they they can't fully get it, man. You know, because he's not giving it to him straightforward. He's giving them a likeness, you know. But they like, man, what are you talking about? You know. An example by which a doctrine or a precept is illustrated. So he gives them examples, but he's not giving them a straight skinny as far as what he's really talking about. You know, he's just telling the stories and parables that line up with the kingdom, you know, and things of that nature. But he's not giving it to them fully, you know, a narrative fictitious, but agreeable to the laws and usages of human life by which either the duties of men or the things of the most high, particularly the nature and history of the most high's kingdom are figuratively portrayed. A parable, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Okay, a, a pithy and instructive saying involving some likeness or comparison, and having perceptive or admonitory force. An aphorism, a maxim, a proverb, in which a proverb, a dark saying, an act by which one exposes himself or his possessions to danger or venture or risk. A fictitious narrative of common life conveying a moral. Um, I guess I I I put them. I guess I'm assuming the G is silent, or adage, comparison, figure, parable, proverb. Okay. So like I said, he's he's speaking parallel to what he's actually meaning, but he's not actually going to the actual saying. And it, and it said it's a proverb. So let's look at what a proverb is. Proverbs one. And one and six. Uh, actually, verse five. I'll start at five. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels, and that's our and that's our people don't hear that they don't have wisdom. Okay, they don't have understanding. They don't attain the wise counsel. That 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 church teaches nothing but rebellion against the heavenly Father, man. Okay, they always talk about not my God, not my God. You don't have to follow the law, says the commandments. You can eat shrimp, you can eat pork, you can play the field. You know the Lord, the Lord will love you just the same. It's nothing but complete rebelliousness in those churches, man. And what is wisdom? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. There's no fear there, so this, those people aren't wise in those churches, man. To understand a proverb and the interpretation. So they don't they, that's why they're not getting the proverbs of the Lord, man. Because they're rebellious. He's the Lord is a stumbling block and a rock of offense, man. You know? The words of the wise and their dark sayings. So the proverb is a dark saying, man. Okay? There's no light on that. It's it's, it's a dark saying that not everyone, not everyone that you can't see. Um, to the naked eye, you know, it has to be it has to be shown unto you. When something's dark, light has to be shined on it. And what's the light? The understanding, the truth, man. Which ultimately is your how shot. And not everyone is going to receive or get your how shot, man. At the end of the day. So let's go back to Matthew. Matthew thirteen and uh, ten. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? So we understand what a parable and a proverb is now. He's speaking to them in dark sayings. You know, they're similar to what he's truly trying to say, but he's not giving it to him straightforward. He's giving it to him in dark sayings. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So the Lord was very selective, man, about his men. Okay, even the guy in the story of uh, in the account when he healed the, the man that had that was called Legion, and he put the devil, he put the devils and the demons on the herd of swine, and they killed himself off a cliff. He wanted to follow the Lord. He was clothed in his right mind. Okay, he got healed. But the Lord said, no, man. If Yahweh was about everyone, why wouldn't he allow that guy to follow him, man? It, the Lord is very selective, okay? You churches don't teach that, man. You say it's open up to everyone. He was willing to accept the Lord, man. He seen the miracle firsthand, man. He was healed. But the Lord didn't want him, man. That's why the scripture said, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. You churches don't teach that, man. Cause that's not that's not a good feeling. That's not that doesn't that doesn't open up to everyone, man. So that what that's gonna mess up your money, okay? Uh, and he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given the elect, and who and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even away even that he hath. Okay, for I, therefore I speak God to them in parables, because they seen see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. They can't get the dark sayings, because he's not shedding that light on them. 
And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, in which the Lord always quoted Isaiah. He's talking about he came to fulfill the prophecies, man. Okay? Which you churches try to completely do away with, man. That's all the disciples and apostles had at the time, man, was the scrolls, man, which was the New Testament. You know? Which saith, by hearing shall hear. Which say, uh, it's like, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Least at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and thou should heal them. Okay? So he didn't want everybody, man. All right? He didn't want everyone. He didn't want everyone to get it, man. He didn't want to heal everyone. Okay, so that's one thing, man, that you churches don't teach, man. Okay, but the point, but what we're going into is that the Lord's gonna come back, man, and, and destroy and kill, man. He's not coming back, I said, for everyone to, to just give reward to to uh, to get, like I said, daps and hugs, man. Okay, the Lord is coming to enslave, kill, destroy, and then deliver the remnant of the nation of Israel, and that's it, man. And those Gentiles are Israelites, man, in the Gentile state of mind. It's only been about Israel, man, this whole time. And now it's being revealed. Okay? Because if you churches would have gone to the New Testament, in the Old Testament, you would you get these prophecies, man. You have an understanding, of, you have a glimpse of what the Lord is about. Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Okay, now Edom is a so-called white man. Basra was a chief city, but now you can liken America to a chief city because this is a chief city of, of Edom. Okay, <clears throat> and this is a prophecy. This that is that this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. That's Yahweh shot, man. Because he told Pontius Pilate, man, I lay down my life, man. He told Peter, I can call down 12 legions of angels if I wanted to, you know. But that's not the that wasn't the will of the Heavenly Father at that time, and the will was Yahweh shot to lay down his life being slain as a lamb. So that he may be glorified. And that's the same step we come in. We come laying down our life here, man. We're putting ourselves second to do the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha, that we may be glorified and get and be joint heirs with Yahweh Shah and then have the power. Okay. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. And that's his name, Yahweh Shah. Yah he uh deliverer, savior. He is a savior deliverer. The same as Joshua. Okay. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treads in the wine fat? So hey, Yahushua's garments were bloody, man. Because he was getting busy, man. This is the vision that Isaiah was having of Yahushua in, in the time of his return, man. I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there is none with me. For I would tread them in my anger, and trample them in my fury. And they, and they, talk, they always wonder why we're so mad, and how we, we speak with a loud, and we may not even be mad, we're just talking loud, you know, outside. But this world is so so beta melt and soft and docile that they, they perceive that we may be mad sometimes. So we're just, just talking as men. You, you you talk as a man here, and people think that you're mad. No, man. And the sometimes when we are mad, the scriptures say, surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. Okay? There's no wisdom in this place, man. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart. And the year of my redeemed has come. Okay, and that's what the, the Lord. That's what the Lord is waiting on, man. The Lord is ready to get payback for what happened, man, on you Jakes and on these Edomites, man, and on the rest of the world. Cause two thirds of you Jakes, man, you 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 the one screaming crucify, or crucify, you niggas, man. Let his blood be upon our children. So he's waiting to come back and give that reward, man. You know, and also to those those Edomites that pierce and those Roman soldiers. All right, Revelation. 1 and 7 Behold he cometh with clouds and which those clouds are his chariots man so called UFOs and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him which were Roman soldiers and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him man that's what's going to happen when the Lord comes back man okay the day of the Lord is darkness and not light man it's going to be a time like there has never been a time before man okay that's the times that we're coming into, and your churches aren't aren't preparing your, your congregation for that, man. So they're gonna get they're gonna get they're gonna get smacked, man. Okay, with a club punch. Because they're not they're not looking for it, man. 
That's why the, 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 the day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night, pursuant to 2 Peter 3 and 10. Okay? All the kings of the earth are going to well because of him, man, because he's going to come back in such spectacular and scary fashion, man. Okay? It's not going to be, it's, it's, it's going to be totally different than what you, 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 you Christians perceive, man. You know? Even so, to what? Uh, and we're gonna get a couple more, man. Just going to how the Lord's gonna come back. Let's go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24 and 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall, it's the same thing in Revelation. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay, that's why Isaiah 47 says, I shall not meet thee as a man. Okay. He's coming back in full angelic power, fully locked and loaded, man, to destroy and deliver, man. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Which, what are those four winds, man? Those are the same winds that the angels are holding back in Revelation 7 chapter, man, until the elect is being sealed. They're holding back those four winds, which means destruction. Okay? The elect is going to be gathered, man. Why, why aren't you churches teaching about the elect? Okay, there's only going to be an election that's saved, man. That's who the Lord came for. That's who Paul referenced that in 2 Timothy. Okay, I do all things for the elect's sake, man. You don't teach about the election. From one end of the heaven to the other. Okay? So he's coming back to, to, to kick ass and take names, man. Deliver his people, man. That's what the Lord is all about. Okay, I'm going to get one more. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Actually, verse 6, seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High, Yahweh, to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. You churches don't teach re uh, recompense, man. Payback, man. The Lord is going to pay back, man. You're not teaching that. You're not looking for payback. You're talking about forgive, forgive, but here, here it is. That meanwhile, you, the so-called white man, Esau, your enemy, is not forgiven. They, they rejoice over every time that they, they get payback on what happened. But when we we mention uh, what happened to us, is get over it. It's in the past. Okay, why don't you get over 9-11? Get over uh, 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 the Alamo. That was a long time ago, man. Pearl Harbor. That was back in the 40s. They don't get over it. They have Memorial Day. They remember the veterans. You know, but we can't remember. You know? And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Yahweh shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels... Okay, in the flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not the Most High. The Lord is coming back and he's not playing no games, man. It's too much game playing going around, chiefly, especially you Christians, man. You know, all that damn folly is setting a great dignity right now. And they that obey not the gospel of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So that's nuclear destruction, the lasers from the chariots, man. Okay. It be, there's, there's, there's an extreme punishment coming for, for uh, two thirds of our people when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day okay so that's pretty much all I had uh, like I said it's going, kind of going in the spirit but yeah you churches man you, you're you being revealed left and right man especially about that article that recently came out um, well I did, some, I did a lesson on it you know, the church, the black churches chiefly have amassed, amassed about $420 billion over the last 30 years or so, man. And look at the state of our people because of those churches. You know, you completely fumbled. That's okay, so what that call all. You have one by Shimei Awashai, by Shimei Karkadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone rule well through the spirit. Peace and blessings to the whole for elect. Shalom.